pleasure to present uh, our work uh, on this uh, seminar. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Krzysztof Sawicki, and, and I'm a PhD student at the Faculty of Physics, University of Warsaw in Poland. I'm going to talk about uh, lasing effects in two different setups, uh, two different systems made of uh, two six uh, materials. Uh, in, I will start with the topic which relates in part in polariton physics. Uh, I will show the qualitatively new uh, two six based uh, system made of tellurides and selenides with single cadmium uh, selenide quantum well. Um, uh, this, uh, this system allows us to investigate uh, three different types of lasing in the same sample. Uh, the second part will be devoted to polariton condensation in vertically coupled uh, planar microcavities. So I would like to start my talk with, present uh, with presentation of people who were uh, involved in the research. Um, so the high quality sample uh, were grown uh, in the, our MBE uh, laboratory under the supervision of uh, Wojciech Pasuski. The uh, TEM and EDX uh, characterization was performed by uh, Kami Sobchak and Jolanta Borysiuk. Uh, experiments and uh, interpretation uh, was performed in our laboratory of ultra-fast magnets spectroscopy uh, with uh, theoretical support from uh, Thomas Sturgeon. Uh, all, this, all these people uh, are from the University of Warsaw. Uh, so uh, I think uh, everybody here uh, knows uh, what polariton are. They are um, quasi-particles uh, emerging from uh, strong coupling between photonic mode and um, excitons. So in stroke coupling uh, regime, we can describe polariton as a, a superposition of uh, excitons uh, and photons. Uh, the excitons content, uh, exciton content gives us strong nonlinearity. Uh, at the same time, the photonic content leads to very light effective mass and makes the system very experimentally accessible. So in the experiment, we can prove the strong coupling by, for example, uh, um, measurement of uh, spectra as a function of uh, the tuning. Practically, in, in experiment, we can achieve that because uh, we grow typically our, we grow our sample with the uh, wedge-like microcavity. Uh, which allows us to tune the energy of the mode uh, from infrared to green reg uh, region. Um, so we basically work um, uh, somewhere here uh, in red, red and, in and, in and infrared uh, region. So uh, we expect uh, mm, mm, a few types, uh, several ty types of uh, emission from uh, micro cavity, uh, cavity, uh, from micro cavities uh, coupled to, with quantum well. Uh, so, uh, for a very li uh, light excitation power, uh, mainly we observe uh, polariton luminescence from um, lower polariton branch. Uh, bosonic nature of polaritons leads to simulated scattering of the polar and polariton condensation the lowest energy after increasing of the excitation power. If we uh, increase uh, exciton density or uh, temperature, we, we can uh, lose the strong coupling conditions. And in weak coupling uh, regime, which we can achieve um, a stimulating emission uh, with conditions of population inversion, uh, where, where the condition, condition of population inversion are reached. Um, if we further increase the temperature or uh, exciton density, we can observe uh, exciton dissociation and third uh, polariton threshold, uh, which is uh, photon lasing involved electron hole plasma. So far, only uh, uh, one or two of, uh, of this uh, uh, of this lasing threshold was observed for uh, one structure. Our goal was to um, to achieve uh, all three for uh, one um, one structure. So we investigate uh, a molecular BMP taxi ground sample with single cadmium uh, selenide uh, uh, quantum well 
place uh, in the middle of the uh, lambda half uh, microcavity. Um, DBR are, are made of uh, zinc telluride and uh, multi-component alloy. Uh, and here I show that the quality of the sample is, uh, is um, very high because uh, we can observe uh, intermixing uh, uh, mixing of the uh, elements between the layers. So uh, there is uh, several advantages of this system. Uh, for example, band gaps of uh, DBR layers are much above the uh, quantum well and mold energy. So we avoid uh, uh, parasite absorption. And what is uh, very important, the lattice mismatch in the system is very low. So let's start from uh, emission properties in room temperature. So what we can observe is uh, three characteristic uh, fingerprints of lazy, which is blue shift, narrowing of the line, and non-linear uh, non increase uh, uh, of the intensity. If we can compare uh, an, um, binding energy of the cadmium selenide quantum well uh, with uh, thermal energy, is uh, um, it suggests that uh, we uh, can uh, achieve uh, exit on um, emission uh, here. So probably it's uh, related with electron hole plasmas, uh, which is uh, unbound uh, uh, electron and holes uh, in the system. Uh, so another uh, proof of the uh, electron hole plasma lasing uh, is the uh, uh, measurement of dynamics which is uh, quite different uh, if we compare with the polariton lasing. So after pass, we here we observe uh, uh, increase of blue shift following the excitation pass in, in the case of uh, similar sample, uh, but uh, in a polariton lasing uh, regime, we observe uh, red shift up, up after pass. In this case, it's uh, related with the um, decreasing of the population of polaritons here is uh, um, it's related more uh, with the changing of um, uh, refractive index of the layers and uh, uh, existence of uh, a high uh, amount of um, uh, carriers in the uh, in the system. Uh, so now we can switch to the um, uh, to the properties in uh, low temperature. Uh, so basically, here I plot uh, three, uh, three um, uh, spectra for uh, three region of the, these uh, plots. Uh, it correspond to the uh, free situation on three um, uh, thresholds in, in the uh, system. So the first one we can observe uh, uh, here, it's uh, uh, we suggest that it's uh, polariton lasing. Uh, after increasing uh, uh, power, we can observe uh, second threshold and third threshold. Um, <clears throat> uh, in room temperature, we observe only one uh, threshold, uh, which is um, electron hole plasma lasing. Uh, here uh, we would like to prove that uh, the, uh, the, these uh, thresholds are not related in the competition between uh, grand state with the other modes. So here we observe we here we are plot integration emission from uh, from uh, higher modes and the grand state. Um, okay, so. Uh, the first uh, ultra low threshold is attributed to, to polariton lasing. Second one uh, is uh, um, photon lasing uh, involving excitons. After uh, passing through the uh, exciton mode transition, we can uh, observe uh, electron hole plasma lasing in the, uh, as a third threshold. So to get more insight about um, uh, complex spectra, uh, which we observed uh, on the previous slides, 
uh, we perform uh, experiment with the linear polariza polarization um, of detection, uh, which uh, where we can observe uh, uh, linear polarization of emission, uh, which probably are uh, related with the shape and isotropy of photonic traps. So these uh, modes uh, are related with the photonic traps, uh, which uh, are which uh, arise during the potential grow of the uh, sample. So now. Uh, to get more information about uh, this uh, type of um, uh, this, this this type of uh, photonic traps, we perform tomography of uh, K space. So here we can uh, observe uh, full uh, reconstruction of of K space uh, achieved by measure measurements of uh, K resolved spectra as a function of position of the lens. Um, um, uh, before the um, slit of the monochromator. So uh, this, uh, this three-dimensional uh, image, we can interpret as a photon energy as a function kx and ky. Uh, and here we observe uh, these uh, discrete modes. Um, so let's fo focus on this. Uh, this shape. Uh, so these discrete modes uh, are very similar, like in the case of micropillar microcavity, which we treat as a proof of the uh, of the um, of the existence of photonic traps and the emission from these photonic traps. So now what we can uh, do is the um, uh, I plot here I plot a cross section of the three uh, the lowest modes uh, and the uh, angle distribution of the modes uh, are, are independent of the polarization of emission. So it's uh, very similar like in the case anisotropic elliptical microcavities. So the shape anisotropy uh, of the of the micro uh, of the photonic traps determine the uh, uh, radiation pattern of these modes. So uh, here to compare the uh, uh, effective size of the photonic trap with the micro, uh, micro pillars uh, etched from, from microcavity, planar microcavity, uh, we um, etched uh, um, nine uh, micro, uh, micro pillars with different uh, diameter. So here is the close up on the uh, one of them. And uh, if we look for, for, the, uh, for the emission from micro pillars, we can observe a different uh, distance uh, between the modes. And now we can compare it with uh, typical, uh, typical um, spectra from photonic traps. We checked uh, 33 photonic traps, and typical effective size of the micro cavities is similar, like in the case of uh, micropillar with a diameter 3.5 micrometer. So uh, it brings me to the summary of the first part of my talk, uh, where I uh, show um, qualitatively new. Uh, uh, cadmium selenide and uh, telluride uh, microcavity, uh, which allows us to observe free lasing threshold uh, um, and uh, free threshold uh, uh, thresholds uh, in the emission and emission in room temperature. Uh, and uh, uh, I show that uh, the uh, in emission is uh, involved uh, are involved for photonic traps. Uh, in the uh, micro cavity. So uh, let's uh, move to the uh, next part, in which I, I switch uh, a bit the uh, topic uh, and I focus on a uh, polariton lasing uh, from multi level uh, exciton polariton system. Uh, this uh, type of systems offer an attractive platform for studies of nonlinear optical phenomena such as Bose Einstein condensation or parametric scattering. 
In particular, they, are, they open the possibility of constructing optical uh, lattices, enabling three dimensional uh, polariton uh, hopping. So, uh, typical if we have one microcavity and one, uh, one emitter, we can, um, we can achieve a two level system. Uh, which uh, was discussed uh, in the first uh, part of my presentation. Now we have uh, the, the, the simplest one is uh, two microcavities uh, and two uh, emitters, which leads to a four level uh, system uh, with um, uh, four, four polariton polar branches. Uh, so multi-level systems have been realized in vertically coupled planar microcavities, mostly in linear regime. Uh, the non-linear regime was addressed in the context of uh, resonantly driven parametric uh, scattering, like momentum degenerate parametric scattering, uh, with the um, transition of the uh, polaritons uh, in the same uh, k-vector, or energy degenerate parametric scattering with the uh, transition in the same uh, energy. Uh, so, uh, but until now, until now, there has been no research on degenerate parametric scattering induced by non-resonant resonance stimulation. So uh, we uh, we run this uh, type of uh, sample with uh, two micro cavities uh, and uh, two sets of uh, uh, quantum layers placed uh, in the middle of the micro cavities. So it's the sets, uh, sets of uh, free quantum wells, uh, cadmium, uh, zinc, telluride. Uh, here we can uh, prove the quality of the sample uh, with the, here we, we observe, uh, we can see three um, uh, quantum wells. Uh, and uh, similar like in the case of uh, first structure, um, we can tune the energy of the of the modes, photonic modes, by the changing of the position on, on the sample surface because the micro are wedge-like, uh, wedge-like. Uh, and what is most more important here is that uh, the gradient of the thicknesses of the micro are the same, so uh, we can tune the. Um, uh, adjusting the uh, position of the sample, uh, we tune the energy, uh, keeping the same value of cavity-cavity coupling. So now here we we can uh, observe uh, um, non-resonant non case where the, uh, here we have, um, we have uh, two photonic branches and quantum uh, well, uh, emission from quantum wells. If we uh, change the position, we can uh, observe four uh, polaritonic branches here uh, in the resonance uh, conditions. So now I plot uh, here uh, three frames from, from this uh, movie. Uh, so we uh, also um, this, uh, can describe this, this, uh, um, this emission by the model, uh, theoretical model, which, uh, um, which is the uncoupled oscillator model adapt, uh, adapt to a uh, multi-level system. So Hamiltonian of the system looks like this. Uh, so it's uh, four component. First one describing uncoupled photonic mode and quantum well excitons. Second one, uh, coupling between photonic modes uh, and uh, quantum wells in the same microcavity with the coupling uh, uh, parameter omega. Coupling between photonic modes with the uh, coupling parameter kappa. And the last one is the coupling between excitons uh, from different cavities. In our case, uh, we can neglect this, uh, this the, the, the last uh, uh, term. So we... Um, in our case, uh, uh, we have a four-level system with two micro cavities and two, um, uh, two quantum sets of quantum wells. So um, uh, here is the four-level polaritonic systems. Um, uh, what we have here is the um, reflection uh, spectra as a function of position of the sample. 
as we can observe here, uh, the, this model um, uh, describes uh, very well the uh, experiment. From the fitting, uh, we uh, achieve uh, coupling parameters. Uh, so now let's focus on the two of the lowest uh, polaritonic uh, branches in the uh, very low the tuning uh, where the um, uh, excitonic content for the, the lowest uh, the polaritonic branch is about 7% and for the uh, second one is uh, 27%. If we increase the excitation power, uh, we can observe uh, at the beginning, emission mainly from the upper level and uh, emission, uh, much weaker emission from, um, from bottleneck of the, uh, the lowest um, uh, polar tonic branch. Uh, further increasing uh, of the um, uh, excitation power is to the uh, change of the uh, dominating uh, line, the emission. So here I plot situation uh, below threshold and above threshold. So here was once again uh, emission from upper one and uh, emission from uh, lower uh, in the bottleneck and uh, uh, after uh, passing through the uh, threshold, emission from upper and lower, but the lower is uh, uh, more intense. So these two images correspond to the uh, for, uh, full evolution of the um, spectra, uh, which I plot here. So uh, uh, basically, we uh, can observe crossing of the lines and saturation of the uh, upper level. Uh, this uh, threshold uh, is assisted by a narrowing of the line and blue shift. Blue, blue shift. Uh, for the upper level, uh, blue shift is uh, higher due to higher um, content of the um, excitonic fraction. Uh, this image is the, this uh, evolution is uh, described by open dissipative gross pitayevsky equation, uh, in which we assume that uh, non resonant pump uh, creates um, the inactive reservoir. Uh, which is uh, transferred to the upper active and uh, reservoir and lower active reservoir. This, um, uh, these reservoirs are uh, described by rate equations uh, written here. And uh, after uh, uh, polaritons from uh, upper level and lower um, level, um, relax to the minimum of the polaritonic branches and dynamics of the um, uh, condensate uh, at, uh, at the minimum is described by gross pitayevsky equations. Uh, <clears throat> we also include the term describing um, transfer from upper level to the lower, lower level. Um, so to answer the question, uh, how is it possible to achieve to uh, condensate in the same place, but in different energy, uh, we perform time resolved experiment, which um, explain us that uh, uh, following the excitation pass, uh, we observe uh, at the uh, first step, lasing from lower level, and after decay of the uh, lower level, uh, emission from upper one. The order of the emission uh, below and above threshold are the same, but the uh, domin dominates line is, uh, is re reversed. So uh, our model describes um, uh, also time, uh, the dynamics uh, very well. Uh, and from this um, modeling, uh, we can uh, figure out that the transfer rate from active reservoir to condensate uh, uh, determines the order of the emission. And uh, moreover, the oscillation in the emission decay are a consequence of the presence of common reservoir uh, and competition between uh, polariton population uh, build up. So, uh, 
In the last part of my presentation, uh, I will uh, show the uh, effect uh, which uh, was uh, uh, which uh, you could uh, observe uh, on the previous slides, which is uh, parametric scattering uh, under non-resonant uh, pumping. And uh, so, so this uh, energy degenerate uh, parametric scattering um, uh, we observe in the uh, in the emission uh, uh, in the same uh, energy as a condensate on the upper branch. So it's the discrete points in the, in the lowest uh, polarity branch in the high K value. Um, <clears throat> So this uh, non-resonant excitation is uh, very beneficial because we uh, have a spectral separation of the uh, excit uh, excitation and measured uh, signal. So uh, if we uh, look on the uh, on the integrated uh, image of the of this uh, plot, uh, which is here, in the, integrated in the um, photon energy. We can uh, plot uh, a kx ky image, which is a radiation pattern. And here, on in the middle, we observe uh, a condensate and uh, scatter pair of the polaritons here. So, um, if we yeah, so if we uh, check uh, emission from the from the scatter uh, place. Uh, uh, as a function of uh, k zero, we uh, can observe uh, here um, linear uh, linear dependence and strongly nonlinear uh, dependence here, which uh, we interpret as a in the first uh, um, part uh, Rayleigh Riley scattering, and in the second part. Uh, parametric scattering uh, of the polaritons. So it brings me to the summary. We have observed uh, non resonantly driven polariton condensate and dual wavelength polariton lasing in four level polaritonic system. Uh, emission from the lowest polaritonic branch shows nonlinear behavior with a common threshold in input output characteristic. Uh, I showed that the formation of condensate in the upper branch triggers energy degenerate uh, polariton parametric scattering from upper to the lower polaritonic branch. And uh, the time result experiments uh, prove us that uh, the um, condensates uh, on the two polaritonic branches do not coexist at the same time. And uh, <clears throat> Open dissipative gross pitalski model describe uh, um, very well integrated, uh, time integrated uh, measurement and time resolved uh, measurements. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very <laughs> much, uh, Christoph. So, uh, I hope you're okay to take some questions now. Yes, yes, of course. Great. So, let's start. Uh, let me start with opening the discussion. So are there any questions from the group? Uh, I can't see any hands. I have one, can I ask? Yes, Anton, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Christoph, for, for the nice talk. I have one question for the very first part. If you can show the, the experimental dependencies with the multi thresholds there, Yes. Yeah. Here, uh, you know, I'm a bit wondering why you actually observe such a small uh, line narrowing above the threshold uh, at the first polariton condensation threshold. Is the first threshold you basically mm -hmm. relate? Yes. Condensation, and it's surprisingly low, almost no line narrowing at all. So it is a bit. How do you understand it? Yeah. Um... I think it's uh, hard to explain. It's the typical behavior for, for this uh, sample. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it's related with the very uh, ultra low um, uh, threshold. Uh, so it's a very low uh, number of polaritons there. 
uh, and uh, this uh, narrowing of the line is related with, with, with that. Yeah, um, but, but it's a typical behavior for, for this uh, sample. Okay. The Q factor of the sample, by the way. Uh, for a photonic uh, uh, traps, uh, we estimate that it's um, maybe two thousands. Uh, for a planar microcavity, it's uh, uh, five hundred. So, so it's rather, rather low. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Uh, also, I have uh, the question to the very last part. Is actually yes. very interesting physics there, especially to the mechanisms. If you can comment a little bit to the mech microscopic mechanisms for the transfer, the the density of, uh, from uh, upper level to the low. Mm -hmm. I see you put some uh, some phenomenology, phenomenology into the Gross-Pitayevsky there, but yeah. Do you think uh, is there any? Yeah. Okay. So, so the parametric scattering is the mechanism. No, 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 sorry, uh, sorry uh, not yeah. parametric scattering. Actually, the direct term. You, you also, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, it's hard to explain. It's uh, um, in this term we uh, uh, we take into the account uh, all possibility transfer of the. Uh, of the from from the upper level to the lower level. So basically, it's the for example uh, transfer parametric scattering, uh, but also maybe transfer um, uh, with uh, with uh, phonon uh, emission. So so it's uh, all all uh, processes uh, which uh, leads to the transfer from upper level to the lower level. All right, but it's hard to say uh, which one dominates here. Yeah, because the parametric scattering goes on, on the other energy, not just not to the ground state. You know? so yes, but, but uh, polariton uh, scatter, uh, scattered here relates to the uh, lower uh, the, the minimum of the lower uh, bra uh, branch. I mean, as a secondary process after the parametric scattering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you have? Do you think uh, there is a chance you have some sort of uh, optical vibron? Uh, oh, sorry, optical uh, phonon there, mm. which would match the the, the gap between the upper and the lower. Mm. 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 Yeah, for for this. Uh, uh, for this material, is uh, I, I think it's uh, the, the phonon energy is higher, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I only uh, it's it's hard to say what is the yeah. uh, really me mechanics of tra transfer. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I, it's like it's alright. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have some some uh, some. But but what what well, what I can. Well, what I can say from the simulation, when we uh, try to um, fit this uh, uh, this uh, intensity uh, in input output uh, characteristic, the um, in the case uh, 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 gross pitayevsky equation without this term, uh, we can uh, uh, achieve uh, the saturation of this uh, uh, curve. So probably it's uh, some mechanics uh, responsible yeah. for, for that, but it's hard uh, to say okay. which one. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. And you also, somewhere here, you also mentioned that you have, uh, since you have in, in your time dynamics, you have sort of oscillations, then yes. you conclude there should be some common reservoir for, for them. Um, could you specify what kind of common reservoir you you? Recommend? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's common because we pump uh, here in the high energy, and we 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 here split the reservoir for a uh, upper active reservoir and uh, uh, lower active reservoir. So by a common um, reservoir, I mean inactive reservoir in high energy. Mm -hmm. 
but one is located in one cavity, let's say uh, another in, I mean, uh, another reservoir located in the other cavity. Is that right? Or? Uh, uh, I think it's better to say that the, um, the inactive reservoir is in the high energy and uh, upper reservoirs uh, are in the polaritonic branches in, the, in the high K. Okay, I'm, I'm just a bit hard to understand how the, for me, how the, the physically the, let's say, electron hole pairs from one uh, cavity can, I mean, somehow uh, contribute to another one through, through, through which mechanism, through the, ca um, the cavity photon coupling or through, through how? Okay, uh, so uh, uh, I would like to mention that uh, um, we consider the polar tonic branch as a coupled mode and uh, mm -hmm. photonic mode are coupled uh, even yeah. if uh, we have a, a non-resonant uh, case with uh, uh, quantum wells. Yeah, but, but electron holes reservoir are not coupled as I understand. Yeah. Yes. So you pump two reservoirs basically, if that's correct or I misunderstand something. I think I need to think about it uh, more. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and also to to the to this uh, picture, I also have a question regarding the time resolved uh, dynamics. Um, uh, you said that the, there is a parametric scattering, which is yeah most likely the process that transfer the the, the particles from upper to lower branch. Uh, yes. Uh, so, also, so. there is a yeah 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 here. Yeah. Also, it seems uh, I, I'm wondering if you try to resolve uh, in um, time space the emission uh, k equal to zero at upper mm -hmm. uh, uh, and discriminate from the emission at k not equal to zero from the lower branch. If you try to resolve the, these two emissions in, uh, in in a street camera, you know from the from the. Have you okay. got? Could you uh, repeat the question? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Uh, have you tried to look on a street camera uh, the, the, the time response of the emission at high K, uh, which mm -hmm. is out of parametric scattering? How does this, uh, is it at the same time, is it simultaneously present okay. with the upper branch? Or? Okay, so emission from uh, high K uh, and emission from uh, K zero from uh, K zero from mm -hmm. upper branch uh, branch uh, is uh, very similar. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean they they uh, uh, existing at the same time, right? Yes, yeah, that's true. Thanks, thanks a lot. This is very interesting. Thank you. This is very interesting for physics. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you for our questions. Thank you, Anton. Maybe before we move on to other questions, uh, if we go back to the schematic that you have with the gross Pitaeschi uh, equations, uh, okay. following from Anton's question, the transfer from the upper condensate to the lower condensate, uh, it is uh, it is not energy conserving if you take in, if you do not consider some other particle that will absorb the energy. So have you uh, characterized uh, this kind of uh, double condensate, upper lower condensate uh, dynamics for different detunings, which practically control the energy splitting between the upper and the lower condensate and has this affected this term that you have R U L, which practically tells you how efficient is the transfer of population from the upper mm -hmm. to the low in order to understand where is the energy going. I mean, is there are you coming closer to a phonon resonance? Uh, is the so what is you know what what takes the energy away for you? Okay, so thank you for the comment. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, basically uh, measure uh, the, this uh, emission, this uh, laser emission, 
uh, in similar the tunings. So maybe uh, for different tunings uh, we can uh, check this. this yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you done it? Have you measured it for different tunings? Uh, um, Yes, but uh, it was a uh, very uh, difference uh, between uh, the, the tunings in uh, our measurements. So I think we need to uh, check in the uh, for, for a big difference be between uh, the tunings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also on the same topic. Uh, have you tried to model your results by taking into account only one active exit on reservoir? Because just to go back to the discussion, indeed your system is coupled. So an exit on in the quantum well of another of one cavity or the other cavity is practically an exit on in your, in your system. The polariton branches do not distinguish if the exit on is one in cavity number one or in cavity number two. So I'm 100% happy with the approach that you take into account only one inactive exit on reservoir. But then I wanted to understand if you take only one active exit on reservoir, can you model the dynamics that you observe? Is it necessary to take into account two active exit on reservoirs, one for the upper branch, one for the lower branch? Uh, as far as... As I know, uh, if we consider only one uh, active reservoir, we can uh, we cannot achieve uh, oscillation in the uh, uh, decay of the emission. So it's uh, uh, to, to to achieve this oscillation, we need to uh, two modes of the uh, reservoirs. So, but when, uh, when, you refer, when you refer, if you go to the next slide and you show yes. the lower graph, right? When you refer to oscillation in your data at around 30 picoseconds, there is a hint of an oscillation for the upper branch. It appears, goes down, and it reappears. But in your model, there is no oscillation, there is only population transfer, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yes. So, 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 when so, you refer to oscillation for the model, to, to what do you refer? Do you refer to the population transfer or something that we do not see here? Uh, no, it's, it's uh, only population transfer and uh, competition between uh, um, between uh, condensate to in build up. Okay, thank you. So let's move on to other questions. Tamsin, I saw you have raised your hand. So can you go to the streak measurements at the beginning of the talk somewhere? Mm. Sorry, a lot of <laughs> which, which one? Uh, so when you had the triple threshold? Uh, uh, the, the streak one, so uh, the, they were to the, this one, yeah. You have yeah, like okay. a small revival in everything above threshold at 300 picoseconds. And I was wondering, if you knew what that was, uh, it's hard to to uh, understand the question. Question because uh, the uh, voice is very uh, the quality of the uh, voice. Is... Seen, can you please repeat the question? Uh, so at three hundred picoseconds, you have a revival of the luminescence in uh, the final. Ah, okay. Here, on... here, yes. Yeah, these. Yeah, it's an art artifact. It's a measurement artifact. So it's not important. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Are there more questions? I can't see your hands, but if you have a question. I ask. Helgi, sorry. I, I, I saw Helgi unmuting his microphone first. So, Helgi, please go ahead first, and I will come to you, Sergey, later. Just, um, uh, I was thinking about the uh, questions from uh, Anton earlier, and I'm not quite understanding why were we discussing about electron and holes transferring between the two between the two cavities? Why why was this? Because I didn't see this appear anywhere in the model. So why? 
So An Anton, can you maybe tell me why <laughs> why we were discussing about this? Maybe I, I will show the picture. Yeah, just I uh, uh, I got that the inactive free zero I is actually the, the what we pump initially the electron hole electrons and holes the initial pump uh, the, the initial charges we pump. Yeah. But well, yeah, at the end of the day, it turns out that this is the ex an active exit on reservoir, which fits the active reservoir, as I understand, right now. Yes. Yeah. So okay. It's, it's a strongly coupled system, so you don't need to take into account two exit on reservoirs. And uh, very nicely, Christoph, you told us that you you did not in the previous slide you did not take into account exit on exit on coupling, so coupling from two different couple, uh, two yeah. different quantum wells. So this is excluded. Uh, is there a follow-up to this uh, question? No, no, I was just uh, I was just a little bit confused uh, because um, I mean, the model is like, uh, it's, it's like, you know, you describe the reservoirs like when you have multiple quantum wells in a single cavity, it's like you just uh, so exactly yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah. No. Okay. Then. Um, yeah. Maybe one question then. Uh, so, when you have this uh, energy degenerate parametric scattering, and you have condensates in uh, in the two branches, have you? Um, do, are they uh, do they uh, possess any coherence properties? Are they uh, if you measure the coherence between them, will you uh, see something, or are they completely incoherent objects that just leak particles from one to the other? Okay, um, so we have tried, uh, but we didn't see it. Uh, but I think it's uh, possible to observe. So. Uh, if if we uh, try harder, uh, I think uh, we will see it. Okay. Yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, I had very similar question to to the first question of Anton about the narrowing at uh, for the case where you observe triple threshold. Uh, the question actually, my question was, can you explain why the threshold, uh, the line width? For the second threshold is significantly smaller than so that it decreases even further. Okay, yes. uh, yeah. so, so you mean uh, why here it's uh, um, uh, small and here is uh, why much decreased, higher? Why it decreased for second threshold with respect to the value which you obtained for the first threshold? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it's uh, related uh, with the um, if we uh, if we have a polariton lasing threshold, so we have uh, two modes: one from uh, quantum well, uh, second one from photonic mode. Here we have on only uh, photonic uh, content. So so I think it's uh, uh, it's related with that. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, in the range where your uh, yellow area uh, covers uh, the right part, you again start uh, seeing the broadening. Uh, yes. To, to, to what process this broadening corresponds? So mm -hmm. in terms of, like you explained, this transition from uh, narrowing for first threshold and to the second threshold. Okay, uh, so uh, if we consider narrowing of the line uh, as a um, as a increasing of coherence in the system, so here we have decoherence uh, related with the uh, dissociation of the uh, excitons. So by uh, yellow bar is marked uh, mode transition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, uh, some way around here, you have shown tomography, which was uh, blue colored. Yeah. So yeah. here you have some case which are which are just not measured, or so that's uh, not full paraboloid. 
which you show. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you mean in high K? Uh, yeah, there yeah. Is, yes. So it's the for a uh, one polarization. It's, it's this thing is just showing for for only one polarization. Thank you. Thank you. So in the uh, opposite polarization, we have uh, opposite uh, case, uh, which, which we we can see, see here. Okay. Are there any more questions? So, <laughs> sorry, Anton. But can I have for the last one? Yeah. Yes. yes uh, back, back to parametric scattering. Uh, have you tried to look at the correlations, uh, quantum G two correlations between uh, left and right uh, emission? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> So we have tried, but uh, it's uh, very hard to measure it. So we didn't uh, we didn't see uh, any uh, correlation, but I I think uh, it's possible to observe it. How have you tried? I'm curious. Yes. So so we try to uh, correlate signal from uh, this point and this point, and also from from uh, point in the middle uh, with. Uh, uh, point on the uh, the lowest uh, polar tonic branch, so it's very hard to because uh, uh, as we can see here, it's a very inhomogeneous uh, condensate, so it's hard to um, hard to choose uh, the correct uh, place uh, from uh, from which uh, place it's scattered. Mm -hmm. I so, mean, uh... so, yeah. So I think it's a very very hard uh, experiment, uh, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, it's possible to observe it. Yeah, I assume you tried the standard HBT or yeah standard HBT measurements. Yes, yes. Yeah, all right. Not just those uh, on the streak. This is just. Uh, no, no. I I mean. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks. So may okay. I have a Dimitri a question? Very short yeah. one. Maybe I missed something, but I just wondering what's, what was the origin of uh, the photonic traps you mentioned. Uh, okay. Of, uh, of the topic. Is it something uh, like random defects or it purposely made in the structure? Okay, so maybe I show it here. So basically, uh, two or six materials uh, um, uh, are and homogeneous is uh, the process is very very hard uh, because the uh, temperature of growing uh, of the uh, selenite layers uh, are, are much higher than uh, uh, than uh, for example zinc telluride layers so changing of the temperature temperature uh, increase the uh, inhomogeneous uh, in, in the sample so uh, what we can uh, see here, I, I don't know if it's uh, uh, you can see here, is uh, uh, dislocation. So, so I, the, this I see the pointer it's in. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Oh, can you see it? So is here is the dislocation maybe uh, here. So during the architectural grow, uh, we create dislocations. And these uh, uh, these locations acts as a photonic traps in the sample. Yeah, uh, thank you. And um, so the this three threshold you observed is it somehow connected with this uh, with a particular uh, like random appeared trap or or this is not uh, and uh, the yeah. traps are only um, are only give you this. Uh, Few peaks, a uh, few black peaks on the. Okay, so th this this behavior we observe only for photonic traps. So uh, we guess that the photonic traps uh, increase uh, Q factor of the micro cavity, uh, and it's uh, possible to observe only for. Uh, so if you if you check the emission from the sample, only discrete points on the sample. Um, uh, only in the uh, discrete points you can observe a strong emission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's uh, uh, related with the photonic traps. 
and uh, for sure it's a measure for 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 tiny graphs, not uh, for the greater to plan archive yes okay thank you do we have any more questions uh, if i may Please. Yes, thank you for your great talk. I have a question about uh, time resolved measurements. Uh, can you explain the shape of the curve that we are observing and why there is a second uh, peak? And also, I believe in the model, you have a second peak uh, in the rise time of the uh, emission. Mm, okay, so, so you mean uh, why uh, we have two curves here no no no. above threshold uh, for the lower uh, here yes yes uh, so what's why uh, um, for example in the uh, red curve is, we sorry have to interrupt uh, to, you. Christoph, Christoph sorry to interrupt you I yes. think the question refers to the lower to the black curve so Stepan is asking why yes not in the model but on the experiment but also on the model there is there are two peaks if you like in the mm -hmm. uh, in the time result PL of the lower condensate uh, above threshold. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here uh, two peaks. Yes, here. Yes. Yes, both on the model, but more 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 explicitly is more, yeah, it is more pronounced in the experimental data. Above. Okay, above. so so we think uh, that uh, this behavior is related uh, with the competition uh, in build-up, uh, in build-up uh, because we have uh, one common reservoir and two uh, condensates on the two polaritonic branches, and the, this competition between uh, condensates uh, are responsible responsible for uh, uh, two peaks in the um uh, in the uh, decay of the emission thank you are there more questions uh sorry i have a mm -hmm. follow-up uh, question for for this one so um there is on the upper right uh, figure in this uh in this slide uh, there is also a small solution for not only for lower but for an upper uh as well uh, for upper condensate oh, so mm -hmm. uh as i understood yes there is a competition mechanism a competitive mechanism for for the lower uh condensate but for the upper uh, uh what could be the reason for for this installation for this small peak mm -hmm. in front of okay. the one which is not a yes. model. Uh, I think the reason is the same because uh, uh, if we, for example, if we uh, imagine how uh, looks like um, population of inactive reservoir. So if we have emission from, uh, for example, lower one, the, uh, uh, the population of reservoir is uh, in, at that moment uh, um, lower. So, so I think I mean this type of con competition between uh, between um, polaritonic br branches and polaritonic uh, condensates, but in fact uh, it's uh, in model we can observe it. So uh, basically, it means that, uh, for, for example, in model you, you treat your inactive uh, reservoir as uh, infinite, uh, and uh, in experiment it should be some kind of dependent on the uh, on the rate uh, transfer energy to the lower for example and it somehow changes the um, population of the upper one all right or, or uh, uh, I, uh, in uh, we assume that uh, inactive reservoir uh, have a part of uh, gamma which is a decay so it's not infinite so so it's uh, also decay of the reservoir included. Okay, thank you, Dimitri. Any more questions?
Well, I have a question before I see another hand, which goes back to the parametric scattering. Mm, and here, uh, you, you attribute the ring emission that you see to parametric scattering, which is a plausible mechanism. Uh, have you performed, uh, have you recorded the emission intensity as a function of pump power for the signal and idler only for the highway vectors to show if they are mm -hmm. uh, what is the dependence and if it is different to the dependence that you get from the condensate mm, okay so uh, i didn't prepare this uh, this image here but uh, uh, yes uh, we measure it so uh, I think it's uh, harder to um, explain the mechanism uh, in, in this uh, picture because uh, we observe also, also uh, we, we observe the two type, types of uh, scattering here. So uh, one is the rally scattering and second one is the uh, parametric scattering. Uh, so, so it's, it's hard to uh, distinguish exactly. this. this Exactly, this is my point. How can you distinguish between Rayleigh scattering in a strongly disordered microcavity, which would give you this kind of ring emission that you have, to parametric scattering? Uh, yes, so uh, we think that uh, if we, uh, what I show here, if we plot uh, emission from uh, scattered points uh, as a function of uh, K0, zero, uh, the first part is the uh, um, Rayleigh scattering, and second part, uh, nonlinear, is uh, related with the parametric uh, scattering based on literature, uh, for example. Um, Sorry, so these are these are beta and kr. I can't see very well. You have k. Okay, okay. So so it's the kl uh, and kr uh, are the points. So so. Uh, uh, yeah. This one is uh, K, uh, KR and this uh, KL as a function of uh, K0, uh, okay. which is here. Right, now it is clear. So well, clearly you have a nonlinearity in the buildup of the parametric process and you compare the yes. intensity of the condensate, so it is present. Very nice. And the non-uniformity of the ring uh, is attributed again to disorder? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions that have come up? Uh, no, just a pedagogical question, Christoph. Uh, when you are showing the first dispersions for the double cavity, um, where you have your double cavity, uh, yes. and you show the dispersion, you have, uh, if, I, if you can go to this slide, I saw that you have X1 and X2. Um, uh, well, it's too far. Uh, okay. okay. Yes. So you have two excitons in the system. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. So are your excitons degenerate or there is a split okay. splitting? Uh, I didn't uh, show it, but uh, uh, in the micro cavities, there are a uh, different uh, little different type uh, one of them is uh, cadmium uh, zinc telluride and cadmium zinc telluride doubled by manganese so there is an energy the small yes. energy shift so, so, so. Yeah? exactly exactly this uh, this energy shift is related to the uh, dopant of the manganese in one of the uh, sets of micro cavities okay thank you so if there are no more questions uh, I would like to thank you again very much for joining thank us you. Uh, today. Uh, this is the tradition. We have lots of questions at the end of a talk because we really try to understand. So I hope you don't mind. But, uh, no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for our questions. <laughs> okay. So thank you everyone for joining. And uh, uh, Christoph, if you can stay on the line and we can carry okay. on uh, with the discussion. Okay. Have a good day. Okay.
Hello. Hello. Thank you for the talk. Very nice, uh, very, 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 very nice results. Uh, and uh, so let me just turn off the recording because there's no point in.